And what's up, everybody? Another Boys Only Podcast for you. Episode 3. Let's talk about that preseason win. Let's get some let's get some things off the table. Let me pull up the Cowboys roster because we have some things to discuss with the roster. With the roster. Please, sir, will you discuss the roster? Uh, the, the roster with the quarterbacks and the running backs. But we call them right backs across the pond. And we don't call it the football field. We call it the pitch. For those of y'all who don't know, I'm a big soccer fan. I can't wait till the World Cup. I think they, they are... I'll put it like this. They, they, USA has a chance. But if they don't show up, Again, if they don't show up again, that's neither here nor there, though. Okay, first order of business: Cavante Turban is on the team. Cavante Turban is on the team. Cavante Turban is on the team. It's not even close. There's nothing much to think about it. The dude was the MVP of the USFL, and and. Here's the beautiful thing. You, you want to know why? You want to know why Cowboy fans like Kevontae Turbin? Because for the first time, oh, for the first time in, whoa, I don't even remember, maybe Rocket Ishmael, we finally have somebody with some speed on offense. We finally have somebody with some speed, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my gosh. We finally have somebody with some speed. Like, we've been asking for this for years. Can we get somebody with some speed, y'all? We finally got somebody with some speed. Yo, shout out to Kevante Turbin. We finally got somebody with some speed. <laughs> I mean, first the kick return, then the punt return, take his behind out. <laughs> He's on the team. <laughs> we don't need him. To, we don't need him to attend no more. Oh, man. Thank you, Cavante Turbin. Thank you. Next order of business. Um, now I got to put up the stats. <laughs> I mean... There's low key, there's low key a quarterback battle. There's low key a quarterback battle at backup quarterback. Um, I listened to the to the first half of the game. I couldn't listen to the second half because my phone just I kept losing signal and I just couldn't listen to it. But um, dare I say, dare I say. Listening to the first half of the game, Cooper Rush was doing well. But as I look at his stats, this man was three of six for 32 yards. <laughs> it just didn't, it didn't seem like he was making any mistakes. And maybe the wide receivers weren't dropping too many passes or whatever. I don't know. It didn't seem like he played that bad. Um, but Will Greer... Six of ten for ninety-eight yards, and he played. He basically played most of the second half. Danucci came in and had two for two. He, we know he's not making the team. So Will Greer clearly had better stats. Cooper Rush to me played. Look, at least it sounded like he played better. Here's the thing. This is Cooper Rush's job to lose. The only reason it is his job to lose is because of that win in Minnesota. He doesn't win that game in Minnesota. Will Greer is the start the uh, backup quarterback, and it's not even close. I am curious to learn. I'm curious to see if what happens if Will Greer gets the start this um, Friday against the Seahawks. I'm wondering what will happen if Will Greer gets the start and Cooper Rush comes in in the second half. I think they want Will Greer to win the job. 
but they're not just going to give it to them, if that makes any sense. Second thing, ladies and gentlemen, or I should be third thing, ladies and gentlemen, the Dallas Cowboys roster, I think for the first time in a very long time, we have good depth in, in pretty much all positions except wide receiver. And that's only because Gallup in Washington is injured. Um, but I bring this up. I like Rico Dattle. And I do not know how much practice squad eligibility he has. But Malik Davis is coming. Malik Davis is coming. Okay. Rico had 13 carries for 44 yards and a touchdown. Malik Davis had eight carries for 37 yards and a touchdown. Malik Davis looks good. Oh, and and by the way, I watched the highlights after. Obviously, I watched the highlights after. Um, the um, what you call it? I watched the highlights after the game was off to really get a sense of what happened. Malik Davis is pretty good. He's going to be good. And and like I said, I don't know how much practice squad eligibility he has, but he's he's. I don't know if Rico's gonna make the team <laughs> unless he can stay on the fact practice squad. That's third thing. Fourth thing, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, uh, Dalton Schultz. This is his last year with the team because Jake Ferguson is showing up. I'm guessing Jake Ferguson is more of a gamer. Because supposedly what during practice, during training camp, I mean, he showed like he can be decent, but he hasn't shown that he's going to be good. He's just shown that he can be decent. These last two preseason games, Jake Ferguson has been awesome. Okay? Jake Ferguson has been awesome. So we're uh, um, Dalton Schultz, you, sir, can leave. You don't want to block. You don't want to stretch the field. You, sir, do not deserve $10 million, $12 million. Whatever your number is, no, you don't deserve it. I'm sorry. I want every NFL NFL player to get their money. But if you don't deserve it, either lower your price or uh, skedaddle. When's the last time somebody, somebody said skedaddle? Lower your price or skedaddle. I'm just saying. Um, and, um, I feel sorry for the defense because we got good depth. Y'all like, y'all got to realize this is the first time in a long time. We've had great depth in multiple positions, multiple positions. So the way it's looking, the way it's looking. I think Terrell Basham and Tristan Hill are on the chopping block. But they're good. They might be trade bait. Hopefully, if we can if we can get some trade bait, we got we got to we got to explore that. But I don't know if they're going to keep eight defensive linemen. Cuz if you look at the roster, This is the depth chart. This is the unofficial depth chart. Your starters, as of right now, your starters are Demarcus Lawrence, Neville Gallimore, Osa Osa Odigizua, and Dorrance Armstrong. Really, the starters are Demarcus Lawrence, Neville Gallimore, Osa Odigizua, and Michael Parsons. (laughs) That's what the start lineup is, but I digress. So, now, these are the backups. You got four starters. These are your backups. Terrell Basham, Quentin Bohana, Carlos Watkins, Dante Fowler, Sam Williams, John Ridgway, Chauncey Goldston, and Tristan Hill. Ladies and gentlemen, that is 12 defensive linemen. 
That is 12 defensive linemen. Dare I, that's unheard of. We are 12 deep at defensive line, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody should be shouting. For all my Christian church folk out there, somebody should be shouting. We are 12 deep at defensive line. I remember we, we, when we didn't, ha- we had Greg Ellis, and then that was it. <laughs> we had Leroy Glover, and that was it. I remember it was just Demarcus Lawrence, and that was it because Randy Gregory was suspended. You know what I mean? Like, like this is great, okay? And this just this just go. This is my personal thing. This goes into the trenches win games. If you do not dominate the line of scrimmage on at least one side of the field, you're going to lose. Our offensive line is not good right now. Hopefully it's a little better than last year, but it's not good right now. Our defensive line has the chance to be the most dominant D line in all of football. I'm talking about like number one D line. Like we're 12 deep, but the problem is, and oh, by the way, by the way, we ain't even through Micah Parsons and Anthony Barr into that. Y'all, we could have one of the most treacherous D-lines in all of football. So with that said, somebody, I don't know if we're going to be able to keep all 12. I don't know. I do not know. Because, le- because, Let's say from from because from a from a mathematical standpoint, the, the roster is 53 men. And you're probably like, why is such an odd number? Punter, kicker, kick returner. That's just special teams right there. Though they gave three spots to special teams, okay? All right. So really the roster is 50 men. So from a mathematical standpoint, this is just Hindsight, 25 for the offense, 25 for the defense, 12 defensive linemen. That means you have 13 positions, 13 positions. Let's say you, you keep, let's say you keep four, you keep six linebackers. That's seven. You only have seven positions for cornerback and safety. You need four. You need four cornerbacks. You need at least four cornerbacks with a nickel back. So that's five right there. There's only two spots left for safety. And we got J. Ron Curse, Donovan Wilson, Malik Hooker, Israel McQuamu. And Marquise Bell is showing up. That's five spots. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel sorry for the Cowboys. Now, of course, you can manipulate it. You can manipulate it. Maybe you only keep four linebackers because McQuamu, or I mean, not McQuamu, but J. Ron Curse can play linebacker. But you got Story Jackson and Devin Harper. Like, they're good. Luke Gifford is good. He's he he's deep. Like when I say he's good, like he's okay. He's he can make a team in the league. Devin Harper, they they Devin Harper and Story Jackson are showing up in camp. Like it's gonna be tough. Somebody, I'm gonna tell y'all right now. Somebody's either going to get cut that shouldn't get cut. And I'm talking about offense and defense. It's going to be somebody who the Cowboys believe is not going to be caught on the waiver wire. And when and when they get off the waiver wire, they'll probably bring them back in a practice squad role or something like that. Because you can do that. Because like guys like James Washington and Michael Gallup, you have to you have to put them on the team. You have to put them on the team. Um. 
But even though they can be an injury, I think it's like an injury exemption kind of thing, you have to put them on the team. As far as um, as far as trying to think. As far as wide receiver, running back, I think running back, I mean, granted, yeah, you can just have Zeke and Pollard, but I don't want anybody scooping scooping up Malik Davis. Um, offensive line, you can go short at O-line and hope nobody takes, but O-line is such a hot commodity in the league. Yo, yo second guy will start on somebody else's offensive line. So you got to keep as many old linemen as you can. Somebody's going to get cut that doesn't deserve to be cut. And it's not because they're bad. So basically what I'm, what I'm saying, Cowboy fans, if somebody gets cut and you're like, yo, it's, it has nothing to do with their play on the field. It has everything to do with manipulating the roster. And that's why I'm saying, like, it makes no sense to trade anybody right now because there are going to be many people who are getting um, cut. There are going to be so many guys that get cut on other teams. It's going to be stupid. And so right now, I just I don't know. I don't know. But I will tell you right now, if you're Kelvin Joseph, Things are not looking right. Now, I know some of y'all are saying, but Nashawn Wright keeps getting beat in these games. Nashawn Wright is safe, and I'm going to tell you why. Because C.J. Goodwin, who is our special teams ace cornerback, speed guy, they're saying there's word coming out that he, he can't run anymore. Shout out to Bobby Belt, Cowboys insider, and Brian Broaddus for uh, 105.3 The Fan in Dallas. C.J. Goodwin and C.J. They're saying C.J. Goodwin can't run anymore. So he's looking like he's going to get cut. Um, Kelvin Joseph. Things are not looking good. Things are not looking good for Kelvin Joseph. Um, he's just not showing up. He's not showing he's not showing up like he needs to. And this go this this goes into a bigger issue that gets on my nerves. The Dallas Cowboys, Jerry Jones, and the scouting department. I don't understand why they like to use the second round pick on maybes. Look at all the second round picks: Jalen Smith, Nashawn Wright, not Nashawn Wright, uh, Kelvin Joseph, character guy, Kelvin Joseph, character, Jalen Smith, injury. Randy Gregory, character. All these second round picks they using on, you know, maybe guys. Tristan Hills was a second round pick because we traded our first round pick for Amari Cooper. And even he was kind of a maybe guy. And oh, I, I just forgot to go back to that topic. Let, let's let's pause on Kelvin Joseph. But the reason I brought up Terrell Basham and Tristan Hill is because they're looking like they're going to be the ones to get either traded or cut. And I know Tristan Hill just had a uh, sack fumble recover. And Terrell Basham's had, I think, one or two interceptions this preseason. These guys are playing good. These guys are playing so well. And this is the first, I mean, I feel like this is the first time in a long time where when we, when we drop this team down to a 50, 53 man roster, it's going to be difficult, man. It's going to be difficult. You kind of hope, you kind of hope somebody <laughs> suffers a, uh, a, a big time injury where they're going to miss like six or more weeks so we can de- put them on the pup list. Because if we put them on the pup list, they can, they can remain on the team. Um, and they won't. It won't count towards the fifty-three man roster. So you, that's what you kind of hope for. But um, yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's 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 going to be tough. It's going to be tough. It is going to be tough. 
Um, so Terrell Basham, and then the thing, and and the reason I believe Tristan Hill is going to be the one to go is because um, shout out to Brian Broadus, uh, former scout NFL champion with the former scouting NFL champion with the Green Bay Packers. You got to have sponsors. Sponsors is another word for you got to have guys that want you there. Um, Tristan Hill was a Rod Marinelli guy. Chris Rashard, Rod Marinelli guy. So, um, like, Dan Quinn knows nothing about this guy. <laughs> Dan Quinn knows nothing about this guy. Not, and when I say nothing, I mean he didn't scout him. He uh, he didn't scout him. I don't know if he scouted him uh, when he was at Atlanta because I think he was at Atlanta at the time when um, when Tristan Hill was drafted. So I don't know if he scouted him in Atlanta and liked him. And if he didn't, I mean, he's clearly Tristan Hill's clearly being a model citizen and doing everything he needs to do to remain in good um, in good standing with the team. But this is how the NFL is. If you don't. Um, if you don't show that you are, um, if you don't do anything like ex- extraordinary and you, and you were brought there under a different regime, nine times out of 10, you're the first to go. I mean, that happens at regular work. I remember when I worked at a retail store, um, my my the managers that brought me in got fired. The managers that brought me in got fired. And when new management came in, they was like, Who the hell are you? I don't know who you are. And and and, and until I find out who you are, this is this is what you're gonna have to do. And so I had to get in good standing with the new management. And I did. And they and that they and I established I was part, I was. I was a needed commodity. Same thing in the NFL. You, you just because there's a new coach doesn't mean you need to slack off just because you're one of the best players on the team. No, you got to show this new coach why you are needed. And that's why I think that happens a lot of time with these NFL teams. While a lot of players are willing to move on from teams, even though they have been there for years and years and years, and they just like, no, nah, I don't want to be here no more. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that they, uh, new coaching staff, maybe just things have just changed the way they do things, and players are like, I don't want to do that no more. You know what I mean? It is what it is. So, um, I, I as much as I would like to keep both Tristan Hill and Terrell Basham because I think they're both worthy of being on this team, don't be surprised. Now, back to Kelvin Joseph. The issue with Calvin Joseph is it just doesn't seem like he's showing up. Um, he got first round talent, but he's just not showing up. And right now, there's word on the street he could possibly get cut, which is wild. That's wild that he can get cut. And so, um, yeah, man. That's wild he can get cut. And it just it's it's crazy. It's just crazy. A second round pick ain't gonna make the team. That's wild, man. So he's not playing well. They're hoping it's get it gets better as the season begins. But I don't know. We shall see. And and it's not like they ain't got a backup plan. Israel McQuamu, even though they have him at safety, he can play the nickel. He can play the nickel and um, – or is it outside corner? I can't remember it. But it's either nickel or the outside corner. So if Kelvin Joseph can't is, is no longer here, they have somebody who can take his place. Because your starters are Anthony Brown and Trayvon Diggs. <laughs> Six-round pick Anthony Brown. The best corner, best corner on the team. That's crazy. And of course, Jordan Lewis is still here. I don't care what anybody. And then Deron Bland is showing up. Deron Bland, rookie out of Fresno State. Yeah, Fresno State. Even he's showing up right now. So Joseph, like, bro, <laughs> you need to, 
You need to do something, man. And then um so and and then of course you got your safeties, J. Ron, Donovan, and um, Malik. And Marquise Bell has showed up. So out of fam you, HBCU in the building. So um yeah, man. Nation, let's let's Nation right, man. I know he's a second round pick. And then that's that's too much of um and even like I guarantee you, speaking of the whole second round BS, I guarantee you, if Randy Moss was there in the second round, they would have drafted him. They would have drafted him. They would have drafted Randy Moss if he would have made it to the second round. I don't know that's a sidebar, <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, man. Uh, we got the Seahawks on Friday. Um, I hope they start Will Greer in front of Cooper Rush just to give him a chance because, you know, sometimes, I mean, Will Greer has, I mean, it's only three preseason games and Will Greer came in on the second half this game. I think he deserves a chance to come to play, to start, to see if he can, um, you know, kind of take over. So, yeah, man. But that's it for the Boys Only Podcast. Let's keep it up. Let's do it. Dallas Cowboys in the building. It's your boy, Billy Mack. And I'll holler at you next time. Peace.